Hey, what's going on everyone? Shiva Sapkata here with another Tesla review. Today, I'm going to show you how to install a front bumper camera on a Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, especially the cars without the ultrasonic sensor. Having that front bumper camera can provide great value because it tells you where things are in distance. The vision-based system is not that great and it's not reliable. It will tell you to stop and when you look at it, you still have a long space in front of you. And it's just, the vision is gonna take some time for the vision to catch up. And until so, if you want to rely on a more reliable system such as a front bumper camera, we have a solution for you today. That front bumper camera is all integrated within this awesome instrument cluster display that we installed and reviewed last week. The only thing that was missing on this display that I was not able to show you was that front camera because I didn't have the camera yet. So I promised you that within a week, I was going to produce another video showing you all how this was going to work. And today I install it. I install it on my 2023 Tesla Model Y. I'm also gonna show you how to do the installation on an older car, like a 2018 Tesla Model 3. So that depending on which car that you have, you should be able to follow along and route that camera cable from the front all the way to the instrument cluster. And super easy, now you are able to just press this button here and then see the front view of your car. Any obstacle that is coming on your way, you should be able to see that directly here. And super easily, you just press this and it goes away. And last week we did a thorough review of this unit. We showed you detailed step-by-step -step installation guide. It's a 30 plus minute video doing all the install guides, showing you everything that you need to know about how to install this, how to do a hookup. So today I'm not going to show you all of that install. That video is already linked in the description below and it should pop up somewhere over here or here on the top right corner. Uh, I put it as a card right about now. It should pop up as a link that you can click on and see that detailed video where I show you how to remove all the panels. Today's video is gonna be all about just installing the front camera, removing the front panel, routing all of that cable to the front here and making the connection to the instrument cluster. I also wanted to personally thank you for all of your great engagement on my video last week on this instrument cluster display. So many comments, hundreds of likes, hundreds of comments. I really appreciate it because that not only helps us bring more products to the channel because it helps us rank higher in YouTube's algorithm and YouTube was telling me, all of your regular viewers are showing more interest in this video. That means we're gonna show it to even more people. So I really do appreciate your help on helping us grow. That video is doing really well. And also it helps us know what you are thinking. What feedback do you have? A lot of you reached out with design ideas and TMA is already working on incorporating some of those design on the new iteration of this. So as I said before, this display comes from TMA, Tesla Motors Accessory. They have a large collection of Tesla Model 3 and Model Y parts, as well as some parts for Tesla Model S and Model X. And they have a great customer service. They ship very, very quickly and the prices are very reasonable. So I highly recommend that shop to anybody looking to accessorize their Tesla. And they have also been really great listening to customers' feedback and incorporating all of that. With that, let's get it started with today's video so here is the wiring and they actually made this wiring a little bit more simple compared to what i showed you last time at least on the output side for the display side and for the input side nothing changed it is exactly the same and i will link down below my previous video where i go in very very detail of what each of these plugs do where to plug it amd intel that video is 30 minutes long and I show you everything that you need to know about the installation of this. So please do refer to that. But here on the output side, this is where it connects to the display. They actually simplified things. Now you just have this rear uh, that says that is a rear, but really it is a front camera. So you just plug in the front camera and then it will show here front forward camera. And that's where you take the camera unit and plug it in. And this one just plugs into the screen. And so that is that is everything that you need on the uh, output side for the display side. Everything stayed on the input. They had multiple output last time. They simplified it. So I'm glad they did that. And then for the camera itself, here is a, a very long camera cable here because we have to route it all the way from the front. And then all it does is this lead goes and plugs in 
here and then the remaining one plugs into the display itself so that is it that is the entire wiring process now this camera does come with this adjustable arm here that you can install uh, on your front bumper so that you can adjust the angle of the camera a little bit this is a plastic unit uh, which is actually better because then you don't even need to put this screws to secure it they do send you the screws but this uh, 3m adhesive holds up pretty pretty well um, i have this installed similar camera on my model three and i didn't even put the screws just this 3m adhesive did the job so they send you the 3m adhesive as well as the screws if you want to be more secure you can install the screws for sure but this is a adjusting unit and how this works is you are going to install this camera here and then you can just adjust this uh, using the screwdriver and uh, be able to install this on top just paste this and then the camera kind of sticks out like this so let's go ahead and do that a couple of tools you are going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver. I highly recommend this kit from iFixit. We have used it so many times and all this installs and it is a lifesaver. It includes all the kits and everything that you need on a smaller screwdriver bit. Uh, not sponsored by iFixit, just thought that this tool is super awesome. So I'm gonna put a link down below for this kit. You're also going to need a pry tool a pair of scissors, uh, a electrical tape, because we're gonna do some wire routing. You're gonna need a fishing uh, wire like this, a fishing cable like this, and then you are going to need a 10 millimeter socket wrench with the socket. You can also use a drill for this portion. Let's go ahead and get it started. First of all, we are going to install this camera to this mounting hardware here. So for this front camera, how this works is this cable uh, needs to go through here. There are two notches here. You are going to need to pass this cable uh, from the front here into this notch. So that's the first step so that um, once you install this whole thing, it doesn't become troublesome for you. Go ahead and do that step first. Uh, pass this cable all throughout here. So once you pass that cable, how this works is there is a arrow that is pointing up uh, on the back of the camera. That means this side is gonna be the top. And all you are going to do is align the top side with this bracket here, so right here. And then you're going to install the screws, the little screws that they send through here from the back and then secure this in place. These are super small screws and um, you just have to align it like this and then put the screws on. This is where our really nice bit, again from the iFixit kit, comes into handy. And then you just put this screws, find the hole on the other side, on the camera, and then start securing it in place. So at the end, when you put all the screws in, this is how it looks. You can adjust the angle of the camera, so make it front. Again, this side goes on the top with the 3M adhesive, and then you can adjust the angle. So if you wanna see the bottom, or if you wanna see more towards the top, now we're gonna go over here and we need to remove this panel, this panel, basically all of this so that we can route the camera harness from underneath here, from the front, through the vents here, all the way towards the inside of the car. The first step is to remove the air vent here. Uh, these are just held down by a couple of clips, so shouldn't be very difficult to remove this. Uh, it just kind of pops out. Again, these are the clips uh, that they are holding it down. So you just have to apply some pressure and then it comes out. Where things get a little bit different between the newer and the older Tesla. So the newer Teslas, if yours look like mine with the AMD chip, you're going to have two 10 millimeter socket screws here and then there's gonna be two 10 millimeter there. So those are the four ones and you are also going to have a little plastic pin here that you gotta remove. Now, if you have an older Tesla, you're gonna have two on the clips here as well as two on the front and I'm gonna show you how to do that here. I have a bookmark in the video to show you older versus newer Tesla. So this is for the newer Tesla again. This is where you're going to remove it. If this is what yours look like, these are the plugs you have to remove. There's two screws here, two screws there. So let's go ahead and remove that now. So you can take a standard socket wrench and then just remove this, or you can also use a drill, uh, whatever your preference is. And just, I'm going to use just a standard socket and then remove this, but you can suddenly use a drill of any power tools to remove this. Once you remove this, an easiest way to keep track of this screw is just drop this inside the the front here because we are going to be removing this whole thing anyway so your screw will go with you uh, if you just put it in the front like that. Next we are going to take care of those two uh, screws here 
Again, it just takes a little bit to get this loosened and then it comes right out. Next, we are going to just grab a pry tool and then remove this screw from here. And you just have to reach on that edge, that's the cutting there, and then this just comes out. That will remove uh, this front panel from this unit here so that you can easily remove this whole thing. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this panel here. As you can see, this is pretty loose already, but we do have to remove this here so that we can release this light so you're not pulling on this light. Now, after you remove this panel, uh, you should be able to just pull this out. But for some reason, if it is being stubborn, you can also use a small pin like this and push down on this bracket, the, the little tab that you see here and then that should allow you to just pull this out completely. Uh, I would prevent pulling on the cables here. Uh, you should really focus on pulling on this bracket and then as you see, it comes out. So that's the trick to it is if it is being stubborn, this little thing is holding this in place. Uh, it's a design change from the older Tesla, so this is a little bit more difficult. But you can just use a little pin to pop this out. Now that we have removed all of this screw, the front is loose. We can just <laughs> remove this super easily. There's nothing holding this thing. And this, the whole thing just comes out. Remove the top air vent by simply pulling up on it. Be gentle with this process as those clips shouldn't require much force. Remove the HPAC panel by gently pulling on it. It is held by those white clips. Pull up the front latch panel, take it out, and remove the front cable. Remove the front panel screws using 10 millimeter socket. There are seven screws, including the ones under the clips that are in the front. Remove the front panel by just gently pulling on the edges. Make your way around by starting on one edge of the car and go towards the other end. And for those of you who have never seen the interior of a front, this is what it looks like. It is that cover that is hiding all of this mess in here and uh, when you replace your power front and things you have to tap here but um, yeah now we are going to reach underneath there through the air vents and then take that cable in and then route it from this side all the way to the back there so what we're going to do is we're going to install the camera right here so on the center here so that the camera faces this way uh, we could do it in the bottom here but as you can see this is pretty closed up and it's pain in the butt to remove this. Never ever remove this without a plan. This is gonna take you forever to put this back on. Unless you're planning on drilling a hole here, I would recommend you put the camera right here so that it, it you'll still see the front bumper. I mean, you can put this down, put it straight. I will show you how to do all that adjustment, but I would find the middle point here and then put that camera here. Now we're gonna paste it right here on this plastic part so that the camera kind of aligns here with the front and then the cable we're going to pass it through here and it's pretty easy actually through the air vent when the cable is going in um, i'll show you from the top how i can see my see my hands coming here so I'm, I'm putting my finger through here and if we look at it from down below um, you, you are able to see my finger right here so that's how easy it is to pass that cable then it's all about wire routing and taking it to the back so here's the camera here is the cable for the camera in the front other camera kits that I have seen had one additional input and output here so you could just run the extension cable this camera does not have that and maybe that's a good thing because a lot of people had that kind of come off um, so there's gonna be one long cable that we're gonna be routing and as I showed you earlier um, this is somewhere in the middle for me, but I don't have to align that quite yet I am just going to route this cable from the bottom and then I don't need a fishing wire for this because I should be able to just feel it from the top here as I showed you guys earlier and then get the get the cable So Here's the cable from the top and now we can go ahead and install this camera and then route everything to the front so Tesla helped me identify where the midpoint is because they put this vent accordingly. So there is three of these panels here. So one, two, three. This one is in the very middle. One, two, three. This one is in the very middle. So this is going to be your midpoint exactly as a midpoint. Before you do anything, take a towel and then just thoroughly clean this area. Maybe put some rubbing alcohol or however you want to put it so that it is clean, so that the 3M adhesive sticks really, really well on the surface. So after you clean it, step one is to take this and uh, peel this off from the back here and then attach this. So this is the cover 
for the camera itself. Now align this um, adhesive with the camera and then just put this in. Now you have got the camera secured here. Now we just need to remove this backing and then stick it here, but just align the camera so that it is in the same distance as this bumper here, so that when you are looking at it, the camera is not showing the object is either too close because if you put it here, it will show too close. If you put it way back, it might not show you as close. So kind of make this a straight so that the camera is giving you the true indication of where the object is. Uh, always be careful because this camera might not show the accuracy. There is no ultrasonic sensor here. It will just show the visual uh, to give you a general idea. So for me, uh, it is right here. And then looks like if I put my camera right at the edge here, it is balancing this out. So all I have to do is remove this, the red cover from the other side. So I just have to peel this off and then again once more align this so that I know where the center is. So I have that centered and then here I have this centered as well so that is vertical here and then I'm gonna just lightly press it, step back, look at it and make sure that this feels right, which this feels right to me. Now I can go ahead and just simply push it in to secure it in place. And that is all you have to do. Now the camera is secured and I can adjust the angle as I said. So if I wanna just look straight down, I can adjust it. Or if I wanna look straight to the front, I can do that. I would. Mine is gonna look like this because I wanna know how close I'm getting to the bumpers um, to with those blocks, the concrete blocks on the parking. So mine is gonna be facing down like this. However you wanna face this, um, it just make sure that it's not too far in or out. And oh yeah, this is secure. This is not going anywhere. But if you want a peace of mind, you can also put the little screws that they sent here to further secure it, but this is good to go. So this is what the camera looks like here after the installation. Now after this, you can adjust this camera angle. So if you wanna move it up, you can even see up or straight or down. This is probably going to be how most people are going to use it to look down so that you can see the parking blocks and other obstacles here. But if you wanna adjust it, you can. And now all we have to do is route this and then do all the wire routing on the top. I'll show you how I did my routing with the zip ties. As you can see, I kind of routed it along. All these yellow zip ties are the new cable management. So route it here, uh, zip tied it all through. I'm gonna cut those, the end of the zip tie, routed it through here, and then I have passed it through there. And that's where I'm going to pass it through the firewall here. Uh, you can put electrical tape, zip ties, doesn't matter. Okay, the things get a little bit difficult once you reach this area after you router the cable all the way through here because we have to route that cable through the firewall to the front. Now, first thing you should do is you should look underneath there and then see if there are any plastic that you can see, rubber that you can see that looks like this rubber that you see here on the left. So first look for those rubbers anywhere on any of those plugs. As you see on mine, Tesla just did a metal. They did not put any rubber anywhere. So I have no space for me to route through there. Um, you can also, if it is easier for you, you can also remove this HIPAA filter here uh, by undoing this 10 millimeter bolt. And then there is one on the other side too. You can also remove this here, the plastic, and then it gives you more access. But I don't have to do that because when I look at it, there is nowhere they left me any space to pass this. Everything is metal. So what I'm gonna, do is I am actually going to tap here. So I am going to make a small slit on this grommet, the rubber grommet here, and then I'm going to pass my camera wire through here. This was the same case when I did my Model 3 as well, that there was no place to put it. So I ended up making a little slit on the firewall down below, but now I don't even have that space. So all I have left is here. Um, I am going to pop that out a little bit, route the wire, and then I'm going to cut, make a small slit to pass my wire through there. Uh, that might be your solution, but you might find other grommets or anything, kind of a leather, plastic, uh, rubber looking thing, and then just try to pop that out and see if you can pass it through the firewall. So to route the cable, we have this fishing wire going from here, from that grommet that we talked about. Sorry, the lighting is 
pretty bad. It's uh, direct sunlight here, but it's still lighting is bad. So I passed it through there on the side uh, to try to get the cable from the other side. And if we look at it uh, inside, we did found that come through here. So this is the facing cable. It's already here. Now we are just going to put some electrical tape on the other side and then route it through here. So we're just going to be simply pulling this out uh, so that we have that camera cable that come through. So here is the camera cable. So this is the end, the tip of it. And then this is the fishing cable that we routed to the other side. And all we have to do is use an electrical tape to secure this, then we're gonna pull it from the other side. So just grab a regular electrical tape and then um, you can also use some of the fishing techniques. Uh, if your fishing cable came with the, the hook and all that, mine doesn't have none of that. So all I'm gonna do is a good old way of securing this with the electrical tape and then just pulling it from the other side. Okay, so what I ended up doing is just passing this through here and because this is super thin, this actually seals really well. It doesn't stick out or anything. So the firewall seals. I know this is not the preferred method of doing things. You should probably make a hole here and then pass it if you're absolutely concerned about safety or anything. But the firewall seals in my opinion and I'm gonna leave it like that. I like non-invasive installations. So rather than making another hole, I'm just gonna leave it like that. This is super thin cable. So no issues for me here. And this seals, as I say, I can't see the light or anything there. So. I'm gonna leave mine like that. Other side, as you can see, we pass it through the firewall and it's coming right here. Okay, now we have made all the connections in the bottom. We routed the camera cable from the front. Now we are just left with these two cable harnesses. One that goes to the display itself and this one plugs into the camera. And we are going to route all of this all the way towards the front. And we're going to use some masking tape to put this down so that kind of doesn't move from here and it holds it down. So when you get to this point, you have this plugged in here and we have two inputs. One is for the display itself, the other one is for the camera. So we're going to plug in the display input and all you have to do is align this two pins together and then clip it in place. This is the one that we routed from the side door panel. Then we have got the camera input. The camera cable is right here. So we are going to bring the camera cable and then just plug this in, just align this and then plug this in. Now both of those are plugged in. The display power is on, we are in business. We know that the power turned on, that means the display is working and it shows the door open and close. Well, we have everything still open, let's quickly do a camera test. And to do that, you just have to press and hold on to this right button and then so press and hold and we see the camera. So that worked out really well. The camera is working. Now we can go ahead and put everything back together. That flickering is not there. It's just the refresh rate, but the camera is really nice. It's a wide angle camera. So to activate this new camera while driving or park, all you have to do is press and hold on this right scroll wheel button for just a few seconds. And then when the screen goes black, that is when the camera is gonna show. So I have extension cord in the front with that bar right there. And as you can see, it clearly shows that in the bottom. And no matter how tall you are, you are never going to see that in the front because these uh, things are directly underneath that front bumper. So that's awesome that you're able to see that. Now you can see the parking blocks, all of that. So if you imagine this is a parking block, now you are able to see that on this front camera. All right, we're gonna do a quick test to show you why this camera makes sense and how important it is. So right now, this is a vision-based system, no ultrasonic sensors. I'm gonna put the car into drive mode and the vision-based lines are starting to show up. But as we go forward over here, I don't see any obstacles on the way. There is nothing that the vision-based system is showing and frankly, because there is the trash can, but it's still, it hasn't started showing here. So let's turn on the camera here and I'll show you what it looks like here. So we know that we're approaching that trash can. I have kind of laid it down horizontally. Now, as we move forward, nothing on the vision base. Now it's starting to show, but there is nothing that it told us to stop there, right? Like, so it didn't tell us anything here, but as you look at it, we're pretty close to that trash can there. It didn't show anything. So you would have, in principle, if you didn't know there was a trash can because 
the vision-based cameras are right here and it can't be seeing any of that because they kill the ultrasonic sensors from the system um, you can't see that but like if you look at it you can go a little bit in the front and you still have a little bit of a space right there but nothing on the vision-based system has this been an ultrasonic system you would have seen that there was an obstacle and it would have given you that you are six inches away from that obstacle. But vision-based system does not show that. So this camera adds great value that you can actually see all of that right there. So doing some testing, the field of view testing here is a very wide angle camera, as you can see on the screen. I tried to measure it and I got 18 feet of full coverage. That is pretty impressive for a small camera like that. So it covers entire bumper to bumper, plus a lot more around the surroundings. So this camera is pretty reliable. It will show you things on the side too, not just in the front. So 18 feet, that's a lot of space. So here you can now see the front bumper camera. And as you're going along, it's already telling you to stop, but we know that we still have a little bit of space here. Here it is already telling us to stop. It's going to hit it. There's no way the Tesla sees this, but this system, it is able to detect it. And we can go all the way here. So let's see that there is a car in the front there. Tesla is already saying to stop. When we get to that point, we still see it there in the front. Yeah, that's actually pretty accurate. Probably that's the 22 inches there. But from here, you can see that you still have a little bit of space. So this is what it was inside with 19 inches. Here is the evening view here. You can still see it pretty clearly. So it's very, very clear feed. Uh, the headlight helps with the light and and you are approaching the car, the same location as the daytime earlier. You can clearly see where you're at. And uh, it kind of matches the Tesla's uh, estimate here, but this is really nice. You can see the road, you can see everything in front of you. So it's pretty dark out, but if you look at this here on the screen, the quality is amazingly good. It's super clear, very vibrant, very green super high quality that you can see here. So we're gonna show you another curb test. So we're gonna pull into the curb here and we just have to turn on the camera. The camera is on, as you can see, it is mapping the curb. Should be able to see this as we pull in. And very clearly, we're seeing the curb. We still have a little ways to go. And we can park right against the curb there. That's super awesome. We can now visually see it. So I'm gonna try to move in the, the garage here and I'm gonna show you what this shows versus um, what the Tesla shows. So we're going to pull in. It's doing a great job at showing me the front of where we're at. And as you can see, it started showing me what the obstacle is in the front. And now I can safely go. Tesla is showing a little bit here, but I can now safely see what is in front of me. And it's showing to stop, but I still have a little bit of a space there. So I could go a little bit forward. And that would be the very end of that. Tesla told me to stop it already, but now I see what is in there. This is what it looks like from here. Let me go to the front and then I'll take a picture of how far we are actually are. So this is the actual view here from the front. So we still have a little bit of space here. So after thoroughly testing this camera unit, showing you all what it does and doing a thorough detailed installation guide for both the older cars and the newer cars, this is what I think about this system. I really love it. I love how easy it was to see directly on demand the front view of the car. The front bumper camera has been a big thing. I've talked about in other instrument cluster displays, but this one, specifically, the quality is amazing. It is super easy to turn it on. It is super helpful, and you can see the front bumper really well. And most important for me are all those curves that I might not be able to see while pulling in or get a gaze of how far I am. 
And you might argue, well, you should be learning how to do that without any sensors. And I can, right? Like, but one of the biggest thing about owning a Tesla for me is the benefits, the luxury of having those sensors, having those information that I can look at it. And sure, like, I could drive and back up without a backup camera, but I always look at the backup camera because it is there. It's a feature that I like having. And I was really bummed out when Tesla decided to remove ultrasonic sensors from their cars. I don't think that was a good move for, for Tesla because the camera-based, the vision-based system is lacking big time. And I honestly don't know how they're gonna figure this out where the camera on the top of my car, for example, are gonna see things in the bottom. Even for the older cars like the Tesla Model 3, I have the ultrasonic sensor and it shows me how far away I am in the object. Uh, I still like to see the front bumper camera. So it is also a great solution, not just for the non-USS cars, but also for the cars that do have USS that want to see a little bit more clarity, especially on those curves and the front bumper. So you can see how far away you are and you're not gonna get a bumper curve rash. So that's a pretty great solution in my opinion. I think this camera definitely has a lot of use cases and I would love to get your input. Like what do you think are the most use cases for this? How do you plan on using it if you are ever gonna get the system or use the front camera system? What, what is the purpose that it will serve for you? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Please let me know in the comment section below. Lots and lots of Tesla products coming to the channel soon. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Come back soon for another video. Thank you very much.